I'm not gonna fight injured again. And I was very close to taking this fight now in February, but then I reminded myself of that fight because I went in with a, a, a torn. A... Download the All Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. I want to go back to your last fight, of course. Let's start right there. Yeah, um, sure. Third round, submission finish, boggy yeah. choke, you know, something that's very rare in the sport. And uh, I was watching your uh, post-fight interview, and you were talking mm. about how you didn't really remember like the first and second yeah. round, D did that yeah. submission come like like on autopilot? Like you, it just came to you? Like it was like muscle memory? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, this was actually the first time I had a real rough time with the weight cut. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think it has to do with my previous fight before this one was so easy. Everything went so smooth. Mm -hmm. All the kilos just you know fell off uh, and. Uh, I had no struggle making weight, so I had that kind of security in the back of my mind. And I think I made a few small errors. Uh, so when it was time to, to cut the weight, like 12 hours before, I still had 7 kilos to drop, which is a lot. That's like 15 pounds for those who use pounds. Uh, and my body isn't used to that kind of uh, intense cut. So I think the uh, the fluid loss mm -hmm. made my body first and foremost like I didn't have any energy at all but then you lose also fluid from uh, the head and from around the brain and he clipped me with a good punch in the first round and that kind of you know concussed me and uh, I had a memory loss and the last point I remember was walking into the fight wow. and then everything was a blur and then I'm back in the locker room and uh, I'm asking my brother uh, what just happened. And he had, we had to like watch a movie, uh, like film to get the memory back. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think while I was doing the interviews and stuff after, I was, I was conscious at that time. Mm -hmm. So it's like the memory loss came afterwards <laughs> and then I regained it little mm -hmm. by little. Uh, so it was a very weird experience and, yeah. and uh, for first time for me. Um, so now I have a way more respect for the whole weight cutting process yeah. and also brain health. Uh, because that's a, a very important topic in our sport. Um, but yeah, regarding the submission, it's something I actually invented during my uh, professional debut. I got slammed on the floor by this Finnish guy and I ended up like upside down in guard and I just uh, connected my legs in some weird way and mm. hoped that it would work and uh, I got that submission then and now that was in 2013 so mm. 10 years later I pull off the same move and get <laughs> submission of the year so it was pretty cool it is it is cool man and and you know when you got clipped do you feel like if you you didn't go through that rough weight cut, you would have been able to take this shot and just move yeah. forward? Yeah, I think so. Because I felt uh, so lethargic, you know, I had no uh, energy. So my feet were not responding the, uh, the way I usually use my footwork. So And, and I was way slower. Uh, I had no explosivity, f even from the start of the round. So I, I wouldn't find myself in that spot at that time if i would have been uh, energized i think you know a lot of people they always talk about your striking background but mm. you have more submission finishes you have way more submission finishes than, than yep. pkos right so it's oh, yeah. like yeah, i think people yeah. should forget about it and say like you are a complete mixed martial artist right don't yeah most people see him as a karate guy because that was my upbringing but but then I did a, a lot of years in, in kickboxing, which went over to Sanda, like Chinese kickboxing. And then I eventually got into all the grappling arts. And when I got into MMA, I've always been of the mindset that I need to work on the things I'm not good at. 
I know people love to work the things they're good at because it boosts their ego, but I'm the opposite. Like if I, I'm not good at something that really fuels me, like I want to get better at this. So I spent all of those first years as an amateur just working my grappling and wrestling. And uh, when I got matched up with people, they saw my background from striking. They probably think they would get an advantage by taking me down. So that's why all my fights ended up on the ground with me in submission victory instead yeah yeah man it's uh yeah you're you're a complete mixed martial artist man like i don't think people should be labeling you a certain thing just because you know you 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 have that background you know i mean a lot of people have backgrounds right but like wrestlers turn into phenomenal strikers you know i mean boxers knockout power you know i mean they get ko's all the time so it's a different thing um after that fight did you decide to take a little bit longer time away because of the the weight cut and no i i told my manager that i wanted to fight after summer again uh, and they had this uh, event at bellator dublin uh, but they didn't have any more room because there's so many fighters from ireland and i think they prioritized those fighters first uh, but my teammate uh, carl uh, he fought there so i still went over to watch that event um and uh, that's actually where my uh, opponent made his uh, Bellator debut. And I didn't know what he, uh, about him at the time, but he was fighting there the, uh, on the prelims, uh, supposedly. Um, and I've watched the fight in uh, afterwards now. Uh, but uh, at that time, I was just a spectator. And then I tried to get on another card, um, but still no luck. And then I got this fight booked in February which then got rescheduled to to uh, May 12th. So it was never my intention to go this long, but, you know, it is what it is. You got injured. Like, what exactly happened? Yeah. Uh, it was pretty... <laughs> uh, I, I think it has to do with trauma I've been taking over the years. Uh, because all the wrestling, you know, and twisting and turning and falling and slamming... Uh, it builds up over time so so the joints gets a little bit sore and then something can happen that triggers an injury and that's exactly what happened right now so uh, I'm actually in need of surgery to get this fixed but I didn't want to do that before the fight and the next opportunity for me to fight would be in like six months or something uh, because the next uh, European event is September 23rd in Dublin and I didn't want to go that long so I pushed this surgery forward and I've been training uh, for this fight now and I will two weeks after the fight I'm gonna do the surgery uh, and uh, yeah I, I will uh, speak more openly about the injury afterwards but I don't want my opponent to be able to expose anything so so we'll just keep it at that for now. All right, no, no worries. Uh, so, yeah. so you kind of you did the rehab, you know what you need to do with yeah. the doctors and just to get it back yeah. to train, like so you could actually train for the fight. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm able to perform as usual right now, but like this injury, it won't go away until mm-hmm. I do this surgery okay. because it's been with me for years, but it was never really a problem until. Uh, before this uh, fight okay um luca what do you think of him and his skill set yeah i think it's a very fun matchup because we have a very similar grappling style so i i'm a pretty unorthodox grappler because i never went through the bjj system with the belts or anything i kind of put together my own thing and if anything i would call it catch wrestling because that's what my my coach Omar uh, is trained in. Um, And then I've gotten influence from Greco-Roman wrestling, from jiu-jitsu and different grappling uh, arts. Uh, And when I studied Luka for this fight, I see he has a lot of similar habits to me when it comes to the ground. And he also pulled off one of those uh, submission of the year candidates in his Bellator debut in, in September. Um, he even gave that choke his own name, the Lucanator choke. So, so I think that's why this uh, matchup came about because they wa- see us as two exceptional submission artists. 
so in that regard, it's it's a, a very fun matchup. Um, but I think I'm more more well-rounded uh, from what I've seen, um, and I'm also more experienced. This is second fight in Bellator, and it's my what is it fifth, sixth? Yeah. So I think that will also play a part uh, when it comes to composure and confidence and, and the whole mental side of fighting. Your your only loss in Bellator is to Kyle Crutchmer and in that yeah. fight it almost like you 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 showed like very good defense, you know, mm. throughout the whole fight, you know what I mean? I think a lot of mm. people were impressed by that even though really Kyle couldn't really do anything, but he just was no. wrestle you the whole time, right? So I think yeah. a lot of people are angry when that fight was over. Yeah. Yeah, so so <laughs> I have two takeaways from that fight. <clears throat> Number one is I'm not going to fight injured again. And I was very close to taking this fight now in February, but then I reminded myself of that fight because I went in with a, um, a torn, uh, what's the word, um, cartilage in the ribs. <clears throat> so so it was very, very, very painful. And I had the, the worst training camp because I had like three injuries that – uh, one after that, the other came. So I wasn't able to train uh, as I'm supposed to. And I didn't want to pull out from that fight because I invested a lot of time and money to get to the United States and have my fighting camp over there for five weeks. Um, so I had to fight with a very defensive mindset because of that. But then when I watched the fight again, uh, you know how they score the fights? Number one... The first criteria is effective striking and effective grappling. Uh, and to me, that means you're trying to finish the fight, right? You're going for submissions or you're going for knockouts. And number two then, or three or whatever, is like octagon control and, and those other criteria. In my eyes, I was way more... Uh, aggressive when it came to attacks i was flying in with uh, punches and kicks and then when it came to the grappling i went for all the submissions i threw him with a kimura lock i got the triangle chokes and stuff and he was just holding on to me but he didn't cause any damage so he definitely won in the control part but i was the more offensive fighter which uh according to the rules, should be the, the first criteria. So, so, so in hindsight, I'm not sure that he should have won that fight. It looks dominant from his perspective, but not according to the rules, right? So, yeah, I don't know. But I did the best I could uh, from, from the circumstances I went into the fight with. And I don't regret anything because it's uh, always a, a learning experience. If you go back and watch that fight, I remember watching it live and I was mm. just like, this is going to be hard to score. The judges are mm. going to be confused because judges, you can't trust them. You know, you sure. can't, you yeah, know, yeah. can't trust them. Sure. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, you Not were you were very active in that fight, man. I was so yeah. impressed because I don't know if I knew that you had an injury or that mm. I found out afterwards, but... Yeah, man, like your defensive wrestling was really good in that one as well. You mm. got up, you know, a bunch of times. You didn't just like lay there. He he tried to do the lay and pray, but you were just yeah. everywhere. You just squirmed. That really. popped up right away. Yeah, yeah. exactly, man. It was it <laughs> was on, a, it was a fun fight in in that aspect of seeing like your improvements. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But I was thinking also afterwards, like maybe it would have been better for me to stay down and see if he would do anything. If he would be active, because as soon as he got me down, I popped back up and then it took me down again. I popped back up. So I, I gave him a lot of uh, uh, takedowns, even though he didn't do anything with them. Uh, he didn't cause any damage, but I gave him the opportunity to take me down over and over again by standing up. <laughs> so maybe I should have stayed down. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, learning lessons from that one for sure. And, uh, yeah. you know, with uh, with Luca, you know, you guys both have great grappling and i'm thinking maybe this might turn into a stand-up matchup you know what i mean maybe you finally get to show yeah. some stand-up in this one you yeah know? <laughs> right right that's usually what happens when two great wrestlers fight it becomes a boring striking fight instead <laughs> but i'm but, boring yeah exactly you know what i mean your your attacks are just 
phenomenal you know what i mean just you know how you like link everything together um that's what i that's what i think i would expect in this one you know a little bit if if it does go to the ground you guys are going to be attacking each other but i'm seeing that this fight will play out on the feet a little bit much a little more than usual do you think so i think so uh, from watching his fights he seems like a uh, aggressive counterfighter, kind of like the SBG uh, template that uh, I would say Conor McGregor put forth. Uh, a lot of pressure, but they're waiting for you to make a mistake or overextend, you know. Um, so if he fights that way and uh, and I fight my way, it might be kind of a chess, chess match on the feet. Um, and I worked a lot of my boxing in the last few years uh, because... Previously, I was mostly a kicker. I would throw kicks and spinning kicks and stuff. But now when I work my hands, I can set those kicks up uh, way better. Have you been to Paris before to fight? Is this your first time? Yeah, I was there in 2020 okay. when they did their first first event. How was that? How was, you know, going to a country where MMA was illegal and then yeah. like, you guys go to the first event and you're fighting on that card? Yeah, it was very, very cool because uh, they uh, they marketed it as like a historical event because it was the first international big organization that, that hosted an MMA event and I was going to be a part of that. And at the same time, since it was in 2020, the uh, COVID restrictions just opened up. So in this uh, uh, arena, they only allowed, I think, 1,000 people or something so it was a huge arena but the seats looked pretty empty because there was a maximum limit right and and you know people walking around with the masks and everything so uh, it was definitely a, a different experience but <clears throat> I have very good memories from the whole fight week uh, I would consider that fight my best uh, of all my fights because of the state of mind that I went into and um, in my previous two fights to that, <clears throat> I tried to uh, hide myself up and become uh, aggressive and tough, you know, because I thought that would help my performance. But I felt that mindset wasted a lot of energy. Uh, I would overcommit and I would get more tired than I should be. Uh, so for this Paris fight, uh, I don't know if you watched the, uh, the new Karate Kid show on Netflix, Cobra Kai. Okay. Yeah, do you know about it, Cobra Kai? Yeah, I, I, I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't watched the sure. whole thing. So it just released uh, around the time when I was fighting there in, in Paris. So so I would really uh, channel my inner Karate Kid and go with that whole theme during the fight week. And I used the Karate Kid soundtrack as my walkout song. And so everything just became more fun, you know. Uh, it wasn't this serious uh, attitude anymore. It, it was like a, yeah, more joyful overall. And that really made me relaxed. So this was the first fight where I remember the whole fight in each sequence. Because otherwise it's usually like going into a time machine. Uh, and everything's like scrambling around. And then you're like, what? The fight is over? You don't remember anything. But I was conscious during the whole fight. I can remember my thoughts and and uh, yeah, everything that happened. So I consider that to, to be the flow state that people talk about. <clears throat> because I was in a perfect uh, balance of, of uh, uh, alert and relaxed to perform at my best. So uh, I'm going to try to to get back to that uh, state of mind uh, in this fight now well that's good momentum man you're you're gonna be back in paris for another one exactly yeah and, yeah uh, that's what, I mean. what are your expectations you know in this fight what do you what do you want to show you know what i mean like that last performance was great now you gotta you know go in there and, and create some momentum right because you know in in in, in this yeah. sport it's all about win streaks and momentum absolutely yeah uh i'm always looking at the, the long run, you know, uh, what what do I want to evolve in my game? So there's certain things I've been working on since the last fight. And for me, those are the things that I want to see uh, myself getting out in the fight. Um, 
and I mean my first three fights was first round finishes so I think I need to get back to that <laughs> you've had a bunch of first round finishes though you know I yeah. think this was your first third third round finish since your first mm. finish of your career right yeah yeah it is yeah, I right? think so. so you know you've done it all now it's, yeah. now it's like, like you're in your prime now you know you're 31 years old still, exactly, still yeah. looking like you're 21 right you move yep, like yep. you're 21 <laughs> that's what so i hear you yep. gotta do your thing man go out there yeah. right totally all Absolutely. right man may 12th belter 296 paris france everybody make sure to go follow oliver on his social media thank yep. you so much for the time man all the best and uh we'll thank chat you. soon again awesome cool